Hello. Hello and welcome to this guide on how to use two minute tabletop map assets to create a custom battle map in Photoshop. Welcome everyone to my computer screen. We're going to jump right in and create a custom canvas. File new. Uh, now, of course, we are working in Photoshop today, but most image editors will have all of the options and tools we're going to use. So if you're using GIMP or Clip Studio Paint or anything like that, just find the different fields we're going to use in your own program and you should be good to go. So we're going to set this to inches. We want to work with inches since that's a very relatable number metric. Uh, I'm going to just do 23 by 16 since that's my personal standard. And for resolution, this is the big important number. So let us swap over to our map pack. Today we're using the Dungeon Room Builder map pack or asset pack technically. Uh, within this pack we have a 140 DPI version and a 300 DPI version. Uh, DPI means dots per inch. So this means in each one of our inches we're going to have 300 by 300 pixels per inch. It also goes by PPI. It just depends if you're working with like photos or digital graphics, but it's, it really just means the same thing. So 300 pixels per inch is what is preferable for a custom map since it's bigger and bigger is better unless your computer can't handle it. Um, the standard for Roll20 is about 140 dpi, so you might choose that one. We're going to use the 300 dpi, and within here we have a whole bunch of assets for creating a dungeon, a custom dungeon room. So, yes, we have our width, our height, and our resolution set. Everything else is pretty inconsequential, so hit create. You will have this. Now, this grid overlay is toggleable. Uh, in Photoshop, you can find it under View, uh, Show, Grid, and there's a hotkey too. So, uh, pro tip number one is always work with layer groups. Uh, here's the button in Photoshop. You're going to click that. We get a brand new group. And if we double click that, we can name it something like floor. And in that floor group, I'm going to drop a floor. Now, the reason we I stressed the point that DPI is so important is because it allows you to just drag and drop in here and it will be at the correct resolution. So we can see here, this is the backup. Uh, I have on some of my older stuff, these dimensions appended to the file name. If this imports at the wrong size, um, just fall back to these dimensions and you'll get something at the intended resolution. So when you drop it in here, it's in transform mode, which means you can scale it now. Don't recommend it since, like I said, it's all correct resolution. Just drag it around and you should have snap to grid turned on. That's here in view snap to grid. Make sure you have a little check there. Once that's checked, you can move it around and it'll snap to the grid. Um, we're just going to fill this floor layer up to begin with. When you have your move tool selected, and this will be your main tool used today, um, you want to have auto select, first of all, we'll get to the hotkey in a second. You want to have auto select turned on so that whatever you click, once we have a billion assets on here. Whatever you click will be the one you begin to move. And we're going to, without bothering with right click, copy, duplicate, whatever, we're just going to hold down Control and Alt and then drag whatever we have clicked and that will create a copy. And we want to make sure we put all these copies inside a layer group because like I said we're going to have 
2000 plus assets later on and we want to have some semblance of order. Uh, so that's our floor. So we'll start our next layer group. What shall we call it? Walls. Wall sounds good. And within there, I'm just doing this off the cuff. You can probably tell. So we're just going to kind of make up a dungeon as we go. Uh, in fact, I'm going to nix the visibility of the floor so that we can see these better. I'm not going to do too much of this because this is just a tutorial, not like a let's build. Ah, here they are. Next little hotkey tip, when you're rotating these, hold down shift and they'll snap to 15 degree increments, which means, uh, yeah, so instead of getting an almost straight wall, you can rotate it to be exactly straight. And these ones are designed just to overlap like that. And then, pop quiz, what was our first hotkey? Hold control, alt and drag and you're copying. So that really is the main takeaway of this little lesson. Oh yeah, and if you want to could if you want to duplicate this one, you just click it first to select it here. Um, because we have auto select working, and then we can control drag. And then to bring up that transform mode where we can rotate it, that's just control T like so. We're just gonna make a nice um, a uh, rounded kind of edge. I see there's a gap here, so we just budge that down, which will create a gap here, so we just budge that down too. And then we can click that, control drag, control T, hold shift to rotate in increments, and drop it down here. And you can see with these tools, and with dragging and dropping new assets in, uh, shift and rotate to rotate in increments, Drag and drop, it'll snap to the grid. Um, in fact, probably want that here. Yeah, we can very quickly add assets this way. We can see here this this one would serve better to be on top. So just any any one of these assets, we can just click it because we have auto select enabled, and it will highlight it here. And then we can change the order to bring it on top, and it makes a bit more sense. These are all in the wrong layer group, so we're going to put that in there. And you can see we can kind of keep this under control if we have a good number of layer groups. So maybe a floor group, a wall group, and uh, one or more kind of uh, general clutter or whatever groups. Up to you. If, uh, you know what, maybe I'll just duplicate. So here's another trick for groups. You can just duplicate entire groups. If you select the group, you can transform the whole thing at once. Maybe that's obvious to most people, but uh, there we are. So in doing so, we're just gonna cheat and very quickly create a complete room here. And then I'll go over one final tip for this tutorial. We're gonna enable our wall, uh, floor that is, and we're gonna talk about layer masks. In Photoshop, you can add a layer mask well, the way I know how to add it is to click this button, the rectangle with the hole in the middle, that'll create a layer mask. Now, um, this layer mask, you can think of it as like a visibility mask or like a fog of war, perhaps. So if we use the eraser as an example, let's make a nice big eraser. Uh, and we select our layer mask, and then we begin to erase. We can see here our background showing through because it's masking our layer group and everything within this floor layer group is being masked by this shape we're creating. In this masking system, black is 100% transparency, white is 100% visible. Golly, that was a terrible explanation, but I hope it makes sense. Perhaps you can just watch and see. So the beauty of it is, unlike just erasing an asset, you can just bring it back by painting back over with white. And if you want to get technical, you can use a gray as a partial transparency. 
And in doing so, you can get some cool effects, like this kind of looks like a puddle, doesn't it? So there's one way you can use a mask. Anyway, I'm going to reset my mask because the main function of the mask right now is to mask this floor so that it's only within our room since all of this is technically like subterranean fog of war. So I'm going to select the mask and I'm going to press Control I to invert it, which means it goes from 100% visibility to 0%. And then I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to select the interior. And then I'm going to press that invert hotkey again, Control I. And what do you know, we have our floor back, but it's just here. And if we were to go on and say add a room over here, we can quite easily do the same thing here. Uh, in this case, I'll use the fill tool and I'll fill it in with white because on a mask, white is 100% visible. And there we have it. We can go on to add pillars and whatnot. So you can see the possibilities with one asset pack, but we have quite a few. So go wild and please show me what you create. As our final little thing, if your asset pack doesn't have the DPI marked here, it means it's one of my older packs when I was just creating Roll20 packs. And also those older packs are kind of, they need updating. So first of all, please find that asset pack name, put it in the comments so I know to go back and update it so that I can give you the 300 and the 140 DPI assets and make it so easy to use. But if the DPI isn't marked, it's likely that you're going to import one of these and it's going to be like way larger than what you intended. So in this case, you just want to keep transform mode and read this little one by one guide that I've put on there and size it manually to that size. And then what a useful thing to do is just set an area off the side of your canvas to put all of these things so that you don't have to keep importing and importing and importing and resizing over and over again. You can just go over here to like your asset palette and you can duplicate it and you can do that any number of times. Oops, I've duplicated the wrong one. Uh, that's much easier than importing and resizing every single time. Uh, you might even import like all of them at once and select them all and transform them all to down to size, all in kind of one step. Um, I've done it very fast and dirty, but and then you can put them all off to the side. There's some weirdness going on here, just ignore that. And then from there, you can kind of start the same thing. So that's the roundabout way of doing the ones without the DPI set for now. Um, but please do leave a comment and I'll go back and edit those and make them even easier to use. Yeah, let's uh, jump back to the camera, I guess, for, for an outro. Okay, everyone, I hope that has been informative. I hope it'll help a few people who are perhaps using image editors for the first time. And uh, let me know in the comments what other tutorials you'd like to see. I might do guides like this for all of the popular free image editors. Uh, otherwise, we'll move on to some more advanced stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks and let me know what you'd like to see. Bye.